Hey, North Star, happy Friday. Welcome to Digging Deeper, where we help you lock eyes with Jesus and take a step towards Him. Today's scripture reading is Luke chapter 24, verses 9 and 10. God's word says this, Returning from the tomb, they reported all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them were telling the apostle these things. Today's our fifth and final look at the life of Joanna. And just as a summary, hopefully we've got this into our heads, repetitions, the mother of all learning, is we know that Joanna was healed by Jesus of either uh, demons or a sickness. We know that jo- that Joanna is responsible for funding or backing Jesus's ministry. We know that Joanna assisted in the burial of Jesus, that she was with Joseph of Arimathea that day. We also know that jo- Joanna is the one who witnessed the empty tomb that she, she went up upon an empty, bodiless tomb. And lastly, number five, which is what we're going to look at today, Joanna was one of the first to ever proclaim Jesus' resurrection from the dead. So it was following Je- Joanna's witness of the empty tomb that she and the other women returned to the 11 disciples, which is not the 12 anymore because Judas has gone at this point, and the other apostles that are there, and they report to them all that they had seen. Now, I don't want to rush past this. I don't want us to miss the texture and the tone of this text. I mean, this group of women and these men, they have committed their lives to a man named Jesus, to whom that they believed was the savior of the world. But only 72 hours ago, this supposed savior of the world was murdered in the most brutal way possible. And not only that, did their friend die But his death equaled a death to their hope. It it was a death to the dream that God's promised one had finally come to redeem all things. The women, the 11, the remaining apostles are grieving. I just want you to imagine what what it must have felt like as they were gathered, knowing that, that Jesus had died, but also that their hope had died. I mean, imagine what that would feel like, what it would sound like, what it would, um, like even what it would smell like, what what would that room be like? So, So with all of that in mind, I want you to imagine now the women hustling back to them with these three words. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. This would have been the best news in the world. One, that their friend was no longer dead, that their master was no longer dead, but maybe even more so that their hope was no longer dead. You see, it was Joanna's testimony about Christ, about his resurrection from the dead. It still echoes today. That in fact, in some form or fashion, we repeat Joanna's testimony every service. And hopefully we repeat Joanna's testimony every day. That we proclaim an empty tomb and a risen Savior who has conquered death once and for all. That even now, Jesus is alive and well. That Jesus is alive and reigning. That Jesus is alive and saving. So today, may we echo Joanna's testimony in our thoughts. May we echo Joanna's testimony in our words, and may we echo Joanna's testimony in our actions. May every breath we take today be saturated in the truth that Jesus is alive. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for your word. Pray that by the power of your spirit, God, the reality of your resurrection would sink into our bones today. Father, we praise you that Jesus is alive and well, that our Savior is reigning and ruling now, and He's and He will come to earth again, God, to rule and reign forever. Thank you. Thank you, God, for defeating death. We pray this through the Son and by the Spirit. Amen.